So Bill, looking five years down the road on this media landscape, where do you see things going? Give me some predictions. Uh, well, uh, you know, I think that the uh, the uh, the death of television uh, has been uh, very much overplayed, and at the end of the day, uh, you know, there's a lot written about cord cutting. There's a lot written about you know the changing environment, but I think that uh, you know the the CAB has done a lot of great research around you know what that environment actually looks like, and, and a lot of the research shows. Uh, in a white paper that they actually just issued, that uh, the 18 to 24 year old who has a little bit of a different economic uh, profile and a little bit of a different social uh, agenda uh, is the most likely individual to cut the cord. However, at the end of the day, when they turn 25 and they get a job and they are actually uh, on their own, the first thing that they do is purchase a 50 inch TV and reestablish their cable. Uh, cable at the end of the day represents great value. And even though the cable prices continue to increase and the bill goes up every year and seemingly there's that uh, inevitable uh, rate increase that all consumers face, it's still a great value proposition for a consumer or a household. If you look at anything that from an entertainment perspective can uh, take the attention of everybody in the house or call from the two-year-old to the 90-year-old. Uh, that's the cable proposition and that is uh, something that is great and something that is entertaining and something that is uh, a major, major uh, influence across the board really as part of our society. So I do not see the day where, um, you know, the television is uh, antiquated or gets replaced. I think uh, Certainly, though, uh, other platforms are important. Certainly, the way uh, you're able to take your TV anywhere uh, is the holy grail. If you could really take your TV anywhere and you were able to consume it outside of your home, uh, that would be the killer app, uh, so to speak, that would uh, uh, really, uh, overall, though, really enhance the business. I think these are all business enhancements. There are ways that we can enhance our brand, enhance our profile, enhance our bottom line, because we're delivering great content to places where people typically and ordinarily wouldn't be able to get it. And so, you know, it's our objective over the next five years to be wherever the consumer is on whatever screen they want to watch it and whenever they want to watch it. But there's a, a very strong business model and business proposition within that to supplement I think our linear services and the great content that we produce 20 for the 24-7 network. So if I had to give you the prediction, it would be uh, a lot more of the same uh, with, uh, with uh, some key added ingredients that are supplemental to the experience, but not uh, radically different from the way we see things today. Over the next five or so years, most TVs will become connected TVs. Do you think that will change the viewing experience? And if so, how? On the margin, on the fringes, I think it will. But I, I, uh, I'm an owner of one of those connected TVs, and there is no more frustrating experience than that connected TV. I will go out of my way to not watch that TV for multiple reasons. Uh, and so, you know, I think that the uh, the ultimate convergence of the computer and the TV. Uh, is something that has been uh, feared over the years by executives, but I think that in reality, and, and uh, Charles Gergen has said this uh, always, and I think he's dead on, that TV is a passive lean back experience, that when you get home from work or you're viewing TV and you want to be entertained, the last thing you want to do is utilize your TV as your computer or your iPad or your device. When you're watching TV, your goals and your objectives are completely different, I think, for the most part. Again, around the margins and the fringes, there'll be people who utilize it differently. And I'm sure the press will love to write about that, how TVs are being utilized completely in a different way. Uh, but at the end of the day, uh, the, the just the very nature of the entertainment experience is such that I think the connected TVs, while a great asset in some ways, uh, will not be uh, the, the, uh, the wave of the future for people to consume things differently. Um, and with DVRs, what do you see its ultimate impact? Well, you can't deny the research, certainly, that you see, you know, the, the, it's incredible the, the way that um, time-shifted viewing impacts audiences, it impacts ratings, and really allows some series that might not potentially have been successful to gain a second life, uh, you know, in, 
it either uh, you know be utilized as DVR or on cable. So I think the DVRs are a big uh, can be a big asset. I think certainly commercial avoidance uh, is a little bit easier. Uh, commercial avoidance has been around since the beginning of time, uh, so that's nothing new. Uh, it is a little bit easier, though, to avoid the commercial, certainly with a DVR, than it is, you know, typically. Uh, so that is, I think, you know, very much a concern for the business overall. Uh, but again, you know, the DVR allows the consumer to view more content because they're doing it in a way that is more targeted around what they want to watch, when they want to watch it. And at the end of the day, for content companies like us that are producers of great content, that's an advantage because it gives us the opportunity to uh, not necessarily uh, be uh, in a position where our content is successful based off of the time period that it runs in or what the competition is, but it allows our viewers who are passionate about our brand to view our content when they want to watch it. And for content developers, uh, I think that that's a great thing.